In this lesson, we're going to cover how to orient the LRAs of your joints once you've built them. Uh, LRA stands for Local Rotation Access. And what that is, is it's customizing which direction your X, Y, and Z axis face on your joint without actually adding rotations to the joint, so we could always zero them back out. Um, so here I have a model that has a skeleton set up, and I'm going to go ahead and go into Shading and turn on X-Ray Joints so you can see the skeleton inside the model there. And then I'm also going to go ahead and turn on X-Ray itself so the model's uh, semi-transparent so we can actually see the LRAs when we start to select them. Uh, to see the LRAs, uh, you're going to select the skeleton and you're going to go into component mode. So I'm up here at the top going into component mode. And you can't see anything yet. Uh, to turn on the LRAs, I need to have uh, miscellaneous components turned on here, this little question mark at the end. So once I click that, I get all these little gimbals that come up. And these represent which way the rotation uh, gimbal is, is set up, or the translate gimbal, either one, is set up on the joints. Um, the first thing you may notice is that by default, uh, when we built these, um, X is facing down, pointing at its child joint each time. So this joint's the child of this joint. X is aiming directly down on it. Uh, to it. And that's what we want to see, because um, what that allows us, it allows us to twist without breaking the arm. So I could, you know, well, we wouldn't want to twist the elbow, but the forearm, we could twist it and we're not going to get a kink in the arm because we just rotate X and it's a nice smooth rotation for, you know, like when you twist your wrist back and forth and you want that fall off on your forearm. Um, so that's generally what you want to see. There's, there's some times where uh, that's not the case, um, but uh, will uh, most of the time that, that that's what you want. Uh, if you aren't seeing that, um, you can always select the joint that you have, go up to skeleton, orient joint, and I'll just double check the options. You don't usually need it. Um, the only thing I'm looking for in here is really it, the default's fine. Uh, the only thing I tend to mess with is orient children of selected joints. So if I have this on, not only will it orient this joint, so X is facing down, but it'll orient everything that's parented under it. So the whole rest of the forearm, the fingers, everything. If I want to do just this one, I check this off, and now I hit apply, and it'll orient the LRA. But that one's already oriented to see there. Uh, and you can do it both ways. You could either have the whole skeleton selected in, in object mode, or you could be in component mode, select that LRA, and tell it to orient that LRA. Uh, either one of those is fine. So again, that's skeleton, orient joint. Um, so what we're going to work on is the logic of how things rotate. And there's there's two main things we're focused on. Uh, well, the, three really. The first is making sure that X is facing up towards the child and all these uh, for 95% of the time. There's a couple outlier cases that you don't want that, but we'll talk about that as we start to build the skeleton. Um, what we want is consistent logic. And uh, let's see. Well, you'll notice here on the back, we have these joints all facing with Y forward and Z off to the character's left. But up here on the neck, we have Y facing back and Z facing off to the character's right. And usually you'll see that on an S-spine where, you know, it's as the crest passes from one arc to the opposite direction. You know, so we have an arc going this way and the Ys are facing off that way. And as they're going off this way, they face it the other direction. Um, that's just kind of how it figures out which way is forward. Um, that's not a problem. We can go ahead and fix this. And these will just rotate. Uh, so you can actually go ahead and click on these and, and rotate them. But we don't want to really rotate them. The, the way it's, uh, especially for the spine, which is built straight up and down, um, when these are automatically oriented, they're facing straight back, straight forward. So we don't have to eyeball this. We can keep it precise. Uh, so what I'm going to do is double click on my rotate tool here. And up here at the top, there's an option for discrete rotate. That's that's a snap to rotate as you're going. And here in step size, you're telling it how many degrees to snap every time. Uh, we want to rotate it 180 degrees, but I'm going to tell it 30 degrees uh, just because it's easier for me to see and watch, and I'll still be able to tell when it's hit 180. So uh, with that set, I'm just going to start to rotate this around. Actually, let me show you first what the issue is. So why why is that confusing for one to be forward and one to be backward? Um, so I'm going to grab this joint. So let's look at these again one time. So Y is facing forward here. Y is facing backwards here. 
And so I'm going to grab this neck joint. I'm going to grab, shift select this chest joint. And I'm going to rotate it forward. This should be positive Z, I think. Oops, I'm going to turn off discrete rotate. And you'll notice as this one's bending forward, that one's bending backwards. So they're both rotating in positive Z. So if I click on either one, they've got the same value, but they're going different directions. And for an animator, that's that can be confusing. You, you, you want consistent logic as you work on your rig. You don't want to think, okay, I need to rotate this one forward, but I need to rotate this one backwards to get them to go the same direction. Um, so by rotating this around, we could easily fix that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for actually all of these. There's a lot of stuff in here for the face. I'm just going to assume that's the one for the sake of this demo. And turn on my discrete rotate again. I'm going to go ahead and flip these around 180 degrees. That looks like that's 180. Turn off my discrete rotate again. So now, when I grab the, just these two joints again, and it would happen for all the way down the chain, but I'm just going to focus on these two because it's easier to see. Now they both bend the same direction as I go forward and backward, and, and the, with the same values. So that's consistent logic. Uh, you know, it's a little thing, but it's when you're animating, all you want to have to think about is animating. You don't want to think about how the rig works. Um, so when we're setting up a rig, we try to, you know, cover basic things like the, the logic of how things work. Um, so another case is on joints, and particularly hinge joints. Um, so ideally, when you bend your knee, you should be able to kick yourself in the butt. Your foot should hit your butt when you're bending it. I can eyeball this while moving it in two directions and get that, but you'll notice in here it's it's rotating on all these axes at the same time to be able to do that, um, which isn't such you know a big deal looking at it. But when you start to get into animating your graph curves, uh, you're going to have all three of those going, and you're going to go. I just want a little bit closer to the butt, but I have to like just these three directions back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to get it to move that little bit. It'd be really nice if I could just rotate this and say Z and get it to bend like we were doing with the spine. Um, and we could do that. We could change the local rotation axis of this joint to do that without adding rotations on here again. I mean, you'll notice up here I was putting the spine back in position. Had we just rotated the spine 180 degrees, I'd always have to remember to set these back to 180 degrees in here if I just did it with the, the default rotation of the, the skeleton. Um, so let's go ahead and work on this knee here. And this one we're going to eyeball, because it's it's not in any particular direction, and I just kind of need to visually line it up. Uh, if you need it to line up, say, with the overall length of the leg, sometimes you could do is kind of what I call looking down the barrel of it. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this middle one. But you know, kind of line up the heel with the hip and say, OK, that's, that's kind of straight there. So let's kind of line that up more with the foot. You know, that's that's about where I want it, but I'll still test it out. So, you know, it's a good way to kind of eyeball it into place. Uh, again, you'll notice X is still facing straight down towards the child joint. And, you know, I'm looking at the, the model itself, and, I'm, you know, as I'm looking at this, you know, the back of the knee is, you know, let's, let's go ahead and turn off X-ray for a moment. Yeah, the back of the knee is right there, but, you know, the center point of my rotation is back here. So I'm going to move it just a little bit more. Because your leg's kind of like your forearm. You could twist your foot out some without moving your knee. So that's that's how we'll start to account for that. And let's try that out. So I'm going to go back to object mode and rotate the foot. Now you can see I'm just rotating it in Y. And that's, that's about right. That's getting back to where I want with one axis. So that's a better setup. Um, and you'll just want to go through and check that for everything. Um, you, generally, you'll want to keep X facing towards the child, um, but you know, check and make sure Z and Y are good. Otherwise, you could always rotate X, uh, but you know, don't rotate. It, it's essentially always rotate X because X is the fixed one. Whoops, not not the actual object, the uh, LRA. So as long as you're always rotating an X, you could always reposition Z and Y and figure out which direction you want them to be. Keep them consistent. Um, in cases like this, you don't have to worry about the end joint because there's nothing port facing. There are times where you want to rotate this, and again, we'll get into cases where we'll talk about doing that. Um, a good example for the hand, actually, is uh, because this, this is a demo one that I, I, I 
tried to break the LRAs rather than doing this when I first built it. Um, what I do for the hand joint is rather than have it be oriented, what I'll do is uh, I'd unparent the fingers, I duplicate the forearm where it's already oriented, and uh, move that to be the, the wrist. Um, and that way we don't get, let's go ahead and turn back on x-ray here so you guys can see what's going on. That way we don't get x facing off to the thumb or one of the fingers, it's just facing straight down so we, we get a nice twist action for the wrist. Because we want twisting like this for the hand. Uh, if we're rotating this way, that's not going to be nice for the hand. So we really need something more like that. But if, if it's just lined up straight with the, the forearm and the rest of the arm, that's the easiest way to do it. So let me let me go ahead and do it right now so you see what I'm talking about. So when I'm building the skeleton, so I'd unparent these. Um, we'll just go ahead and delete this. And I will duplicate this form. I'm going to move it in object mode, should be fine. And move that down to the wrist. I'm going to parent it back to the form so we get just one single chain. There's not two joints parented under the elbow. Grab all the fingers and parent them under hand. So now when I twist the wrist, I get this nice twisting motion, which is more in line with how the bones work. And if I want that fall off, these both twist the same direction, so I could, you know, have this one rotate 100%, this one rotate 50%, and get a nice fall off on the rig. And, and again, we'll talk about this later. Um, you'll notice I only have half a rig here. Uh, orient your build half your rig, build a left side or the right side, doesn't matter which. Uh, but orient your LRAs, and then once you've got them oriented, um, you don't have to build the other side. We're just going to select each part here that needs to be mirrored. Go to Skeleton, Mirror Joint. I'm going to make sure it's mirroring across the right axis. If you're wondering what the right axis is, you can look at this little gimbal down here. Y and Z is what's going through the center here. So that's the plane we want to mirror on. Um, if you have your joint's name, which I highly recommend doing before you do this step, um, I've put LF underscore for left and RT underscore for the right side. Uh, I've built my left side, so I'm telling it to search for LF underscore and replace it with RT underscore for the right side as it builds the right side. Uh, I also want behavior. So I'm going to go ahead and click apply. I'll do this for the shoulder too. So I'm gra grabbing the clavicle. Um, what you don't, you have to do these one at a time. So let me, let me back up for a second and show you how not to do this. You can't grab two things at once and have it work. It won't do it. It'll give you an error. But you do one at a time. Also, you want to grab uh, what you want to mirror across the center. So the spine's in the center. Grab this. It'll mirror across the center. If I grab the whole spine and do it, uh, where's my move tool? There we go. Uh, I get a whole nother spine there, which we don't want. I mean, it's done the whole thing, but then I have to delete the spine and repair and everything, and it's probably just as much work, if not more, to mirror it in that case than just grabbing each part and hitting apply. Um, also, once you do a command, you can always hit, uh, I believe it's, is it Y in this case? No, G. Uh, G is the last command run. Uh, if I want the last tool I use, that's Y for uh, hotkeys, but um, go ahead and delete those again. So you can see this well as much as you can on a video. So I'm going to hit apply here with this, and or, or I'll hit mirror, which will close the window. All right, and then I'll just select this joint, and I'm going to hit G, and that does the last command run, so I can mirror that too, and just do this quickly. So you don't have to keep that window open. So when I want to mirror the, the facial stuff, I can just start selecting and hitting G on my keyboard over and over to start to do that. So that's orienting LRAs. Hopefully you understand uh, why we're doing it. So we're, we're doing it for you know ease of access. So things that are hinge joints that you should be able to do on one axis you can, or say like this wrist here, we can rotate it. Just an X, you know, that's the easiest way for twisting. And then so we also get consistent logic across the whole skeleton so that when we grab multiple joints and rotate them, especially when we're working in FK, Everything goes the same direction. It all makes sense. It's consistent logic the whole way through. Um, so uh, there you go. That's how to orient your LRAs. Oh, you know, I almost forgot one thing. Uh, just so you guys aren't surprised by this when you see it, uh, I should show you the LRAs on either side. Uh, so you notice when you mirror, it's flipped the other way. It's, it's X is done like this 180. Or actually, I think it's uh, 180 on... Uh, why maybe? I know, but it, it's flipped the opposite way. Um, don't freak out when you see this. This is 
part of mirroring the behavior rather than keeping the orientation the same. Uh, by mirror, so when I say behavior, when we go into mirror joint and options, you notice here there's behavior orientation. If we did orientation, it would be visually a mirror of the side. So why would we be facing out this way, facing out that way? Um, that's not what we want because again, this is about keeping consistent logic. And so when those elevators face the other way, I could bend both elbows and they both go the same direction. If they had mirrored behavior, we'd have that same problem we had with the spine before where one's bending one way and one's bending the other uh, because it's a mirror. Um, so that gives us a reflection in, in rotation when we're doing that. So that's actually really what we want because you know now we can grab either side and get the same type of motion with whatever rotation we're doing on, on each side at the same time. So if you see that, don't go, oh my god, it broke my LRAs. Uh, that's actually what you want. Um, and, and also kind of why we set up one side so you don't have to try to figure out like how do I rotate this? Okay, so I gotta flip X 180 around and now now Z is facing the other direction and Y is facing the other direction. Um, it, it'll just do it for you. But it's it's all about the behavior. So if you are getting something like, let's go ahead and break this. You know, something like that, then you've done something wrong with setting up. And, you know, if we look at this again, you know, that, that's where they're set up, you actually mirrored, but you're getting reverse direction, which is not what we want. Um, so again, just think about behavior, double check your rig, make sure you're getting, you know, mirrored behavior on either side after you mirror it. Um, keep your logic consistent. Uh, and that should get you a properly working CL10 to set up and animate with.